If I had a dollar for every time somebody has told me they're waiting until night vision gets cheap to buy it, I wouldn't have enough money to buy night vision, because it's not getting any cheaper. It's getting much more expensive. One alternative that inevitably gets brought up is digital night vision, which has been getting better, but it's also been getting more expensive a lot faster than it's been improving in performance. The other theoretical holy grail for budget night vision is competition from China. And that's what we're talking about today. This is an Infrared Jerry 31. This is a set of Generation 2 Plus White Phosphor Binocular Night Vision, and these are now available in the United States for about 4,000 bucks. This video was made possible by supporters of the channel on Subscribestar. Check out the links in the video description for ways to support the show, and thank you for watching. There are essentially three drivers of cost on a night vision device, the housing, the optics, and the intensifier tubes. We can use the almost ubiquitous PVS-14 monocular as kind of a baseline. For a long time, one of the best value buys in night vision has been a PVS-14 with a mil-spec housing, mil-spec Carson glass, and an Elbit Generation 3 green phosphor tube. You can go up market or down market for all three components of that device. There are cheaper housings that have reduced features or perhaps aren't built as well as a mil-spec PVS-14 housing. I've talked about two of those options in the past, the ATN NVM-14 and the AGM Wolf-14 monoculars. Those devices also have cheaper optics. The mil-spec Carson glass that you find on a lot of middle market PVS-14s is very good, but it's pretty expensive. The NVM-14 and Wolf-14 both have cheaper glass with cheaper coatings. They have smaller eyepieces, smaller lenses, and tend to have worse reflections when you point them at light sources. Those devices also have cheaper intensifier tubes. The ones that I reviewed had Generation 2 Plus tubes, which were made in countries that nobody wanted to admit to. But obviously you can go in the other direction as well. You can get more expensive optics like the RPO lightweight lenses that have pretty good glass quality but way less than the mil-spec lenses. You can get monocular housings that have more advanced features like push button controls or maybe they'll weigh less or perhaps integrate in some kind of modular system. And of course you can also get binocular night vision which is a huge increase in cost because you're paying for two intensifier tubes, two sets of optics, and a larger more complicated housing that can house all of that stuff. So what we have here is a set of binocular night vision that has a cheaper housing, cheaper glass, and a cheaper intensifier, but comes in at a price pretty comparable or just slightly above what you might pay for a mil-spec PVS-14. The housing, optics, and intensifier tubes are all made by Infrared, a Chinese company that does night vision and thermal. These only hit the American market fairly recently. Right now you can get them from Custom Night Vision, who actually was nice enough to loan me this set to do the video. Until recently, Infrared, also known as iRay, depending on what country you're in, was better known for thermals, and they have three different types of night vision housing, the monocular, the binocular, and then an all-in-one fusion unit that has a thermal system built into the center. That's basically the splinter cell goggles. They're not the only company making something like that, but it is cool to see something that looked like total fantasy 20 years ago turn into a real product. The infrared, monocular, and binocular systems both have mounts built into the night vision pods that allow you to easily mount one of the infrared e -codies. That is the relatively affordable Chinese version of the enhanced clip-on thermal imager, which gives you a thermal overlay projected onto your night vision image. You can jerry-rig one of those to any existing night vision unit, pardon the pun, but it is interesting that they clearly intend this entire thing to be a very modular ecosystem. All right, let's take a look at this unit specifically. This is the Jerry 31 binocular set. It is an articulating set of binocular night vision. It has some nice IPD stops with thumb screws, which are very easy to adjust. The unit is powered by a single AA battery, which is a little bit out of the ordinary for binocular night vision. And this unit has manual gain as well as an onboard IR illuminator. On paper, this is definitely a full-featured set of binocular night vision, but it still ends up being very lightweight, approximately 16 ounces. This device has a dovetail mount interface, and it actually has a rubber bumper built in to, I guess, provide a more solid fit to a dovetail mount. It's a nice idea. A little bit of pressure from a piece of rubber could eliminate the slop on a dovetail mount. However, I think the dovetail mounts on these are a little bit out of spec to American-made mount systems. I have two dovetail night vision mounts made by Norotos, and on both of them, I have to cram the Jerry 31 in really hard to get it to lock into place. 
The Jerry 31 is controlled by the knob at the front of the unit. This is the power as well as the gain knob. As you turn it on and then spin it all the way to one end, it increases the gain up to maximum. The knob also functions as a button. You can push it in and that allows you to access the advanced features of the device. If you hold the button down for a few seconds, you engage the onboard illuminator, and if you give it the right series of inputs, you can actually change some of the behaviors of the individual pods. One desirable feature of binocular night vision is individual pod shutoff, so if you raise one of the two pods, then they will turn off as long as they're not in front of your eye. I think the way this is accomplished on most binocular night vision is just having the circuit cut off when you raise the pod up. Some of the newer ones I think use magnets and sensors to tell when to turn the pods off, but the Jerry 31 maybe has an accelerometer instead, which is quite a bit more complicated. The Jerry 31 has a couple of different modes of automatic shutoff. One of them is called rollover cutoff, where I believe you have to raise both pods and then flip the unit up. So I assume the accelerometer determines that the night vision device has been raised vertically and then turns it off based on that. The other shutoff mode seems to disable the pods individually as they are raised up to parallel rather than waiting for the entire night vision device to be flipped up on the mount. It turns out neither of these modes are all that usable. I found that when running around with the Jerry 31s, then the pods would flicker and turn off randomly as the accelerometer went haywire. As I was running, the left pod shut off. Oh shit. Huh. Does it have one of those uh, sensors that when it flips it, it auto shuts off? It does, but it's supposed to only shut off if it, you know, flips all the way up and then you flip the whole knot up. But it's like an accelerometer, maybe. Oh, there it goes. I just yeah, saw that. It yeah. blinked off. That is not good. Oh, do that again. And the left one went that time. Yeah, both of them? And the right one went that time. Yep, all right. Do again. Oh, shit. Yep. That's a pretty significant issue. You don't want your night vision device to cut out when you're running, especially if it's over uneven ground. So I just disabled the shut off completely using the programming mode. Amazing. Number one. Now I have a concussion and my nods are off. I mentioned earlier that this is a very lightweight device, but that they kind of cheated a little bit. The objective and ocular lenses on the Jerry 31 are reduced noticeably in size compared to mil-spec optics you'd find on a PVS-14 or any of the myriad binocular night vision devices that just use PVS-14 glass. The smaller ocular lenses definitely require you to get the device closer to your face in order to get the same field of view as you would through something using PVS-14 glass. That's something we saw before with the AGM NVG-40. That was another affordable binocular night vision housing that had relatively poor glass quality. If you go back to that video, one of the issues I had with the NVG-40 was really bad lens flare if you're looking at any light sources. The Jerry 31 doesn't suffer from lens flare as bad as the NVG-40, but it's not nearly as clean as mil-spec Carson glass. The Jerry 31 also has its own issue with chromatic aberration. You can really see it in the periphery of the lenses. If you start to look away from something, anything in your peripheral vision gets a really bad blue shift. It's really obvious to your eye, but kind of hard to capture on camera. Hopefully I have some clips of a skyline showing you the effect. As you can see, when we look away from the hills, the blue smearing effect of the chromatic aberration should be pretty obvious on the skyline. The main event, of course, is the intensifier tubes themselves, because that is the biggest driver of cost for a night vision device, and that's one of the main reasons this thing can be so cheap. These are Chinese NNVT Generation 2 Plus intensifier tubes. I've used a lot of Generation 2 night vision, both green and white phosphor. These tubes appear to have very similar quality and performance to the Generation 2 tubes in the NVM-14 and AGM Wolf-14 that I reviewed previously. And neither those nor the tubes in this Jerry 31 are nearly as clean and high quality as the Photonis tubes that I've used. The main limitation of Generation 2 night vision, including the Photonis tubes, is just the raw gain performance. They do not amplify light as well as Generation 3 night vision. That means that in very dim conditions, Generation 2 night vision just can't hang with Generation 3, and Generation 3 thin filmed is still lacking compared to unfilmed Generation 3. On one of the shoots where I was using the Jerry 31, it was a very dark night, no moon, overcast, and very far from any city center. The image I got from the Jerry 31 was very dim, however, it was still fairly usable. Not on par performance-wise with even my very old Generation 3 green FOSS tubes. Why is one dark as dick? Somebody's been fucking with it. Wait, which one? You're gonna need to fix it. How do you fix it? Is it digital? Oh, 
That's really ridiculously lightweight. Yeah, your, your cap's on. Oh, fuck. The fuck you God damn it, bro. You handed it to me, you fucking dick. You are fired. So, how do we wrap this thing up? All three aspects of the Jerry 31 binos are a lot cheaper than most other options on the market. The housing is a little bit jank with the accelerometer based pod shutoff. The optics are, again, definitely worse than the mil spec Carson glass you can get on almost any night vision device these days. As far as the intensifier tubes go, they're pretty standard for Generation 2 Plus night vision. The real tough point of comparison for me is low performance duals versus a high performance monocular, seeing as the cheapest duals are about the same price as the most expensive monoculars. Personally, I'm not totally sure I'd ever buy a top tier monocular night vision device. I think duals are just more enjoyable to use. They're better suited to activities like moving, shooting, and driving. If you mainly want the maximum in detection capability for the least price, then yes, you should probably lean towards a high performance tube in a monocular housing instead of trying to go for duals. But in my opinion, you would get a lot more enjoyment and use out of a cheap set of duals than you would out of an expensive monocular. That's kind of just comparing the extremes of the market though. Green Phosphor PVS-14s are still available, and although they're more expensive than they were a few years ago, they're still a good deal. As of this writing, Custom Night Vision still has some PVS-14s with mil-spec housings, Carson Glass, and Elbit Green Phosphor Gen 3 intensifier tubes. It was super cool of Custom Night Vision to loan me this nod, no strings attached to make this video, so I don't mind giving them a shout out here. They're also one of the few night vision companies that I've had direct dealings with. I've bought lasers and nods from them before, so I know they're a legit source. I think anybody who's brand new to the night vision market will probably find the infrared night vision offering a little bit more compelling than somebody who's been watching it for a couple of years. If you can put out of your mind how cheap things used to be and just take an honest appraisal of the market as it is right now, I think the Jerry 31s and their monocular version make a little bit of sense. There's also the possibility that the legal landscape or the availability of night vision will change in the future. It does seem possible that market or legal pressures could persuade night vision companies not to sell so much to the commercial market. Remember that we basically get drippings from the pan of the military-industrial complex, and depending on world events or government regulations, a lot of this stuff could just disappear entirely almost overnight. So it's probably good to have a commercial-grade Chinese option as a backup, even if we don't necessarily need it yet. Alright, that's all we got for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thanks to Custom Night Vision for loaning me this device. I will return it fully intact and missing no pieces, I think. I'll also include a link to them in the video description because I know they're legit, so go ahead and check them out. That'd be the right thing to do. If you'd like to support this channel directly, you can do so via Subscribestar, link also in the video description. If you support me on Subscribestar, you get access to bonus videos as well as some other stuff, which is a lot less interesting, so I'm not going to talk about it here. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I will see you guys next time.